On the afternoon of November 18, 1952 four sleek jets painted an inky navy blue soared off the deck of the carrier USS Oriskany into a swirling Siberian snowstorm gusting over the Sea of Japan. The carrier was part of Task Force 77, a fleet of 25 ships which included three carriers used to launch daily airstrikes on North Korean bridges and logistics during the Korean War. Earlier the day, its warplanes had struck the logistical base of the Horyong, used as a gathering point for supplies received from China and the Soviet Union a short distance across the border. The four F9F5 Panther jets were braving flurrying snow, cloud covered down to 500 feet and visibility not exceeding a few miles, to fly a combat air patrol cap. The fleet's air search radars could only reliably detect aircraft under ranges of 100 miles, and Soviet Il-28 jet bombers that could cover the distance in a few minutes had been photographed nearby. Though no direct air attacks on the fleet had been attempted by Soviet or Chinese jets, it was vital to maintain the cap to guard against a surprise attack. The Panther flight was flying a patrol pattern at 16,000 feet when they received a report, bogies detected just 83 miles north of their position, heading from the direction of Vladivostok. The four aircraft from Navy Squadron VF-781 assumed an intercept course. Sure enough, they spotted the vapor trails of seven Soviet jets flying high above them at 40,000 feet and the silvery glint of their bare metal fuselages. These were not IL-28 bombers, but MiG-15 fighter jets that could outrun even the late model F-9F-5 Panther by 70 miles per hour. At the same moment, the fuel pump of flight leader Lt. Claire Elwood aircraft began to malfunction. He was called back to the carrier, and his wingman assigned to cover for him. The Panthers of Lt. Royce Williams and Lt. J.G. David Rowland were left to face off against seven superior Soviet fighters. What happened next remained a secret for the next 40 years, and would only be fully detailed in 2013 when Royce was interviewed by Thomas McKelvey for Flight Journal magazine. Since November 1950, Soviet MiG-15 units had been battling American fighters over Korea. However, they had always been deployed from Chinese bases under the pretense of being Chinese or North Korean units. Officially Soviet forces were not party to the war, and Washington did not seek to dispel this fiction for fear of further escalating the Korean conflicts it was seeking to bring to a close. Soviet fighters did shoot down numerous American reconnaissance planes throughout the 1950s, and U.S. fights did stray over the border and attack Soviet airfields on a few occasions. But generally, a fighter unit based on Soviet territory was not expected to join in the fighting.